As you know, Singapore is a hot food destination, but today's not about trying foods that everybody knows. So, oh no, today is all about the hidden eats that our guide Charlotte is gonna take me and you along with her. Y'all know how the rest goes. Let's go ahead and get it started. Okay, so I got a little lost, but we found her. We got Charlotte here. Hi. I mean, uh, I'm so excited to see your perspective of Singapore. Thanks, man. Yeah, all right, let's yeah. get it started. Uh, oh, so we are starting off at the oldest vegetarian restaurant here in Singapore, going for some dosa. Oh my. So we actually got the masala dosa, but then look at the chutneys that come with. Have a pure like coconut chutney, you got a tomato based chutney and a lentil based chutney, and then the iconic sambar. So I just want to get a pure taste for some of these chutneys in the sambar, so I'm not going to dig deep inside that dosa yet, but just go ahead and try it out in its pure form. Mm. Really like that coconut chutney, it gives you a great coconut savoriness, but the extra dosa is so nice, you can taste the fermented rice flour, you can tell it's got a little bit more chew in it. Get in the middle of this and would you look at that, that creamy potato mixture loaded with that turmeric. See some onions, little peas, peppers. Oh, this looks fabulous. Get it in that little tomato chutney. It's almost like a piece of marinara texture from that tomato chutney, but you get in there with those potatoes, those lentils, and that filling is just so creamy, so umami packed. And then the contrast with the actual dosa, because they're using that rice flour, it's a nice little crisp on the outside. Love that. And then that final lentil chutney. We shouldn't have started with this place. I'm gonna eat way too much to start this tour off. I think I've been playing around till now though. Just go ahead and get a little dip of everything. That's a key. Don't be like me and play around and try each one. Get in there, get all three in that sun bar together. That's when the magic starts to happen with this. Delicious dough side, the way that crunch on the outside with the creamy inside, winning for me that contrast. But we're about to cross the street, head over to the Hindu temple. Doors, uh, when the devotees go in, they'll ring it, and also on the way out. Uh, that's to ask the gods to hear them prayers. Yeah. So in this case, it's placed very high because a lot of tourists come to this uh, temple, so they want to keep it. They want they want to have people keep ringing the bells. Hindu temples are always a trip for me because they're always just so colorful and done to just such fine detail and craftsmanship. I love that Charlotte has all these imageries to help show me and help, you know, describe the history of Singapore to me. Look what this road used to look like. Is that not truly fascinating? Wow. And that is the roja. So popia essentially is like an unfried spring roll, right? Uh, so the skin is made of meat flour. I think she's gonna start making the roja first. So I worked up a little bit of a thirst, got a typical Singaporean drink here, which is barley. Now barley is actually just kind of like a cereal grain. If you look at it, it almost looks like rice and oatmeal kind of had a baby. Very nice, they serve it to you warm. Cut a little bit of kind of like a rice porridge, subtle sweetness flavor to it. Just a great thing to have in between bites of your meal. And got this beautiful plate of rojac, topping with a lot of crushed peanuts. It's gonna be extra umami and crunch back here. I love some little jack, so I'm starting with this. And as you know, there's a ton of stuff in here because little jack actually just means mixed. Oh wow, I'm trying not to get the whole tower to fall down here. One of the reasons I love the rojak so much is just an onslaught to your taste buds because it just explodes with flavor. There's so much going on. You get every component, it's just really complete. I mean, look what we got here. We got pineapple, we got more of the green apple, get all that sauce on there. I love the Yotiao in here because they are just a sauce magnet as well. 
and one of the fun parts is each bite is completely different. I've taken three or four bites and I don't think I've even tasted half the ingredients in this little jack. And then a good old popia. I've had a lot of popia in my life, so I'm always down for a snack on this. Ooh. Look at that, got the jicama right there that's been cooked down and down and down with some carrots, lettuce, peanuts, a little chili sauce, and nice little wrapping right here. That little crunch, nice doughy skin with all that fillings, love it. And last thing we got up is some chicken satay. And look at the satay sauce here. Don't really see any like red curry paste in here, but instead it's gonna resemble more of like Indonesia style. So lots of peanut sauce and lots of coconut. Oh my, that is some thick satay sauce. Nice soft chicken. You can see where they're spicing it before throwing it over that open flame. For me personally, I wish it had a little bit more of a char on it. That peanut satay sauce is sweet. Thank you. Definitely making sure to go back for my favorite though, which is this little jack. Uh, so the three main traditions. So this is Tibetan Buddhist temple. Uh, it's been here maybe about 10 years. Certain uh, features about Tibetan Buddhism is quite distinct uh, compared to the other two traditions. Of course, for all Buddhists, the main goal is to achieve enlightenment. So for the Tibetan Buddhist, the teacher or the Lama very very important because if you have a very good teacher, you can achieve your enlightenment in one lifetime. Yeah. Um, so kind of like a shortcut. And the other thing that they have is the prayer wheel over there, and there's a big one over that side. <laughs> About to do something near and dear to my heart, Chasu Su Yuk. Y'all know I lived in Hong Kong for a year, so I'm very passionate about my roast meats. All right, now we're about to have some of the best roast meat here in Singapore. We're going for the Su Yuk first. Let's try it out. Nice, meaty, roast, great pork belly flavor coming from that. And then the outside gives you just a slight little crunch. Like that suyuk, but cha su is where it's at for me. Look at this. And that sauce, looks like it's loaded with spices. And they got a great char on the outside. sauced up, not overly sweet. So many chasus, what they do is just kill you with the sweetness. This one has a balance of flavor. Wow. You get a little bit of that fat that melts in your mouth. Really get the subtle spices coming through that kind of make your taste buds tingle. See, that's the key right here. You got fat and you got roast level right here, different layers. I'll tell you what, this rivals some of my Hong Kong stuff, y'all. This is absolutely delicious. Simple. Get that away from me, there's gonna be none left. Here in Singapore and Malaysia, what you get is you get a dog with a red tongue. So, why is it the case? Because in the past, most people don't go to an English school, right? So, they can't pronounce Guinness. So, Guinness came out with this idea of saying uh, red tongue dog. <laughs> so, now you go to a Kopitiam. Instead of saying Guinness, you'll say Ang Ji Kao. Ang Ji Kao. So that's quite cute, yeah. I told Charlotte how much I love pork contestant, so she brought me this place for an opal soup. And you could have your eyes closed to know this is an opal soup spot. I'll tell you what, that aroma is strong here. All right, let's get after this bowl of opal soup. And what a beauty. We got pork slices, we got liver, we got tripe. Uh, we got some nice tofu. Oh, that liver looks so good. And I'll, be, I'll be shocked if you can't use chopsticks. <laughs> Bonus points that this place has actually one of the spiciest chili sauces I've had in Singapore. But the liver, nice and fresh. 
You can tell because it's just so creamy after you start to chew and bite into it. And now to go for the fried stomach piece. Deep rich flavor holds into all that sauce, clean tasting, and just salt melt in your mouth. Beautiful try. This food tour is so nostalgic, now we're getting dim sum. I've not had dim sum in way too long. So we got our dim sum to go and we came over to the Hawker Center because we were going to get the fried up oyster cakes, but the stall is closed today, so we're just going to snack on a few dim sum items here. So this item is actually really unique to the stall we went to. It's actually the rice vermicelli that's been fried up with some Chinese sausage and then green onions. I tell you what, if this isn't just hash brown in another form, it's greasy, it's salty, but I love that you get the Chinese sausage with it. You get that little bit of spring onion. Again though, I'm such a textural contrast freak. You get that crunch with the creamy noodles on the inside. Y'all, I think a mad genius came up with this one. You got the sweet potato pounded together with the glutinous rice and then stuffed with a salted egg yolk cream. I definitely a mad genius came up with that. That is absolutely delicious. Nice, sweet, unique dim sum items. I don't think I've had anything like those three at all. But now, it may be nighttime, but it is still hot, so we're about to get some shaved ice dessert to cool down. So this is soursop, and that's jelly. So it's a soursop jelly ice dessert, ice shaving dessert. Got quite a lot of it Exactly how it sounds. It's like a sour, sweet, it's icy, it cools you off. You get the texture for a jelly. It's fun dessert to eat. And sour enough, it's gonna make you pucker, but the sourness is kind of addicting. So first was dim sum, that was a cool down. We technically, in my book, haven't had dessert yet. So we're about to head to one more place to get some dessert. I'll meet y'all there. Okay, we are back over here in Little India to finish off with some palm. <laughs> she has a sugar to come with it. I don't know why it's orange, but I think it's just a plain white sugar. Then they got a fermented rice and coconut milk little sauce. Those edges are nice and crunch-tastic. The inside, ooey, gooey. The sugar gives you a touch of sweetness. And that is gonna wrap it up for the Little Chef's Tour, my kind of beats collaboration tour. Thank you so much to the Chef's Tour. It was a great experience, and the last couple months of videos wouldn't have been possible without them. Now, next video coming from my home state, Arkansas, I'm going to show you some barbecue. I only got one episode though because I really took my time at home to kind of start over and think and get back to my roots and my creativity. So that means a week from now, I'm going to have something completely new and exciting and different. Cannot wait to show y'all. Y'all, it's been Max and My Kind of Beats. Catch you at the next video.